Hi, Mark here from AmericanAeration.com, and in this video, I want to cover some possible savings that you might see by going with what I'll call an alternative energy pond aerator. These would be aeration systems that are powered by either windmills, wind, or solar, and how much you might be able to save in terms of operational costs compared to using a typical plug and play aerator that we would hook up to a 115 volt circuit. So this kind of came about because of some information that was shared with me from a solar aerator manufacturer where they took some data in terms of electrical costs and the operational costs of a typical uh, pump that would be plugged in and, and run on a, an electrical outlet. And, you know, s the problem with some of the information was that the numbers were a little bit skewed or a little bit off. Uh, they were too high on on the the pump cost, the operational cost of the pump that you would plug in and run. And I don't think that's, you know, if you're going to get information, it needs to be relatively accurate. I mean, nothing may be perfect, but it's important to always look at where the information is coming from and do your own research. And so in light of that, uh, I wanted to put this video together with some helpful information, hopefully for the people looking or considering alternative energy aeration versus something that they might just plug in, plug in and run. At the bottom of this video or below this video in the YouTube description, I will have a link to a cost estimator calculator where you can take any mechanical device, an aerator or a fountain, and you can get some basic information off of it, either the wattage or the amp draw on a 115 or 230 volt circuit. You can run some numbers, get a little bit of information from your local electrical provider, put that together, and you can figure out what it'll cost to run any aerator or fountain in your pond. That's, I think, one good step to take. So make sure you check out that link below. And then as we go through this, I'll cover windmills first, and then we'll talk about solar, and we'll compare it to a typical uh, compressor, aeration compressor, that we would use in uh, different size ponds and depths and things like that, and just show you what the difference is. I don't have any particular bias in the sense that I don't care as long as the customer or the client gets the best aerator for their particular needs. If it's a windmill or if it's a solar aerator, that's totally fine by me. If it's a plug and run, that's totally fine by me. I do have some preferences of what I would like to do, but most important is to set it up for the client so they get the best results with whatever they go with. And it has to be fit for each person individually and each pond individually. So I'll talk about some considerations at the end here, but first let's get into the windmill um, aeration costs and any potential savings they might provide. So the cost of the windmill aerator itself, this is just a roundabout number, rough, you're going to find some lower, you're going to find some higher, but around $2,100 will get you into a good windmill aerator. They're often rated by their height, which the idea is that the higher you can get the blades, the fan blades, the, the more wind they'll pick up. So there's some more, obviously, parts as well. And the higher models will cost a bit more. And then blade diameters, you want a good, broad blade diameter to pick up more wind. In terms of the operational cost comparisons, our first comparison will be against a linear compressor. These are diaphragm-based pumps that are often used in smaller ponds and in more shallow ponds. They have limitations. They will only usually work down to six, seven, eight feet max, and so they won't handle deeper water, but if the ponds are relatively shallow, they can be a viable consideration, and they have some real, um, you know, real good uh, benefits, I think, in terms of being pretty darn quiet, and they're very efficient, as you'll see. Of course, in operational costs, the windmill won't cost anything to run, but the linear compressor may cost up to $5 a month to run, and that's 24-7 operation. Often, they'll be less than that, and so at worst, you got about a $60 year expense of running that um, linear compressor. If we have a deeper body of water, we shift over to what's called a rocking piston compressor. 
and these are the real workhorses of the industry. They'll work from six feet all the way down to 40, 50 feet in depth, and, and they can also run multiple diffusers instead of just one. Uh, in this comparison, we're using a single piston, quarter horsepower rocking piston compressor, which is one of the more efficient models you're going to find. And compared to the windmill, zero cost on the windmill versus $15 a month for this quarter horsepower rocking piston compressor. And that comes out to about $180 a year. In terms of solar aeration, in looking at the overall cost of a system, and this is a very broad category in terms of pricing, you'll find some devices a bit lower than this, than our, our approximate number here of $4,500, but there's a lot of systems that are way more expensive as well, particularly those with battery backup uh, included will be quite a bit more expensive. And so for a direct drive, aerator, solar aerator that would work during daylight hours only, a good package, not a, not a cheap, you know, inexpensive uh, imported version, but a very nice American-made high-quality solar aerator direct drive would be around $4,500. This would include uh, a single pump, similar to the quarter horsepowers that we're talking about, one or two diffusers, and the panels and some airlines. So it's, it's uh, it's not for a, a super large pond, but it will definitely cover something probably an acre to up to two acres in size. You'll see a variety of these systems available for coverage too, and I'll mention this right at the end where I think they start to really show some savings if you have bigger water. But in terms of operational cost comparisons, the quarter horsepower compressor here, just like the uh, the example we gave before with the windmill, we've got zero cost on the solar operation, around 15 bucks a month for this size of compressor on a 115 volt circuit. If we want to run more diffusers at some point, usually when we get to two or three diffusers, we might look at running either a half horsepower compressor or dual quarter horsepower compressors. So what you start to see then if you're getting into some bigger water and you need to power three or four diffusers, you're going to see a cost variation there. Zero again on the on the uh, solar side for powering these three or four diffusers, but on the 115 volt circuit, a half horsepower uh, pump as as they come would be about $25 a month to run 24/7. If you use dual quarter horsepowers in a setup. Uh, let's say to power four diffusers, you would probably be close to $30 a month, maybe even a little bit more. And so now if it's $25 a month, we're around $300 a year for full-time operational costs. So some considerations just to keep in mind as you look at these various options online and you think, well, wh where do I go with this if I have no power at all? I, I, I'm kind of forced to go alternative energy but if you have power anywhere within, let's say, 500 to 1,000 feet, anything inside that range, if you have the ability to uh, have an airline, and this is how we would do it, we would hook up the pump and maybe a cabinet by the power source, and we would bury an airline in ground from there to the edge of the pond. And it just serves as a main large feeder tube to get the air delivered to the pond edge and then everything hooks up just as it normally would. We have weighted airline going down into the pond to the diffuser. This remote setup works really well. It's typically less expensive to run than a electrical line to the pond and it provides a very good alternative if you have power somewhere in the area. In my mind the key word here is always consistency. I want consistent operation. And so, therefore, if I can go to power, I will always try to do it, just for the sake of consistent operation. Day, night, doesn't matter what the weather is, I'm going to be able to run. And so, that's important. And I realize, though, that there are locations and there are pond settings that are so remote that there's no way that you can hook up to power in any way, shape, or form, or get a a feeder airline down from a distance. It just isn't going to work. So you have to go alternative. If I have a choice between windmills and solar, 
keeping in mind that a lot of this really comes down to the specific site, location, and the conditions that you see most often. Overall, I would say that I tend to lean towards solar more because typically it will provide more consistent performance. Um, if you have a lot of wind where you are, if it's a daily thing, if it is uh, breezy at night, let's say, I have no problem looking at a windmill as a viable consideration in locations like that. But I also uh, think it's important to understand that when the wind isn't blowing, you get no air out of the system at all. And typically with the direct drive solar aerators, when the sun comes up and you get daylight, you will start to have aeration on a daily basis. There's some benefits to the windmills, as you may have noticed in terms of the pricing, they are less costly up front and they represent a viable good budget option if money is a factor here, if investment is a factor. Uh, and you know they do require a little bit more work to put together and to get erected. They may require a bit more maintenance and they typically will be more intermittent than solar. But that being said, I also take the stance that any aeration is better than no aeration. And many people have had very good results with windmills over the years. Others have not. And so you just have to look at your own situation and decide if maybe it makes the most sense to go that way. But if it doesn't, the good news is the solar aerators are improving so much and have improved so much in recent years that they're a very viable option now. The other thing where solar aerators tend to have an advantage is that they can handle greater depth now. If you're using a rocking piston pump, you will see that these these compressors can handle depths of 35 feet or 40 feet and there's really not many windmills that I know of that can go that deep and really function well. Um, and so th if I have a deeper pond or if I have a, a larger pond that requires multiple diffusers, then I'm going to tend to look at solar for the capability of that system. Now, that's not to say you couldn't set up multiple windmills around the pond and maybe power one or two diffusers with each one, but typically um, if, if I have a bigger body of water, I might lean more towards solar and certainly with depth uh, increasing, I will go to solar. Full-time solar operation, or pretty close to it, is available using battery backup systems, but it's it's a very expensive proposition in comparison to these other alternatives that we're talking about. Some people go that way and are very happy with those devices. And if it's within the budget of someone, I'm, I'm favorable to looking at it. Keeping in mind too that the direct drive systems, which are more affordable, will only work during daylight hours. And so they all have their limitations. And of course, windmill, if, if you've got breezes, if you've got winds, they work. If you don't, you don't have anything. And so there's pros and cons to each one of these, and it's a matter of deciding with all these factors uh, what's going to work best for you. One other potential benefit to the solar side is that at least in 2022, there are still, um, you can still qualify for federal tax credits with these solar systems. Check with your accountant or tax provider or preparer and see what they say. But in 2022, that uh, credit is uh, 26% federal tax credit. So worth consideration and that may make a difference as well. Again, I don't have a preference of any of these over another depending on the person's situation and their geography and the, uh, the elements that they have in their environment. Each one will do a great job if you pick it correctly for your, your needs and situation. And certainly we're happy to help with that. If you have questions about pond aeration for your pond or general area, uh, if you need help with anything in that regard, reach out to me at AmericanAeration.com. I'm happy to help if we can, and uh, I hope you found this information useful. There will be additional information in the description below with some links to other helpful information about this topic of the cost of operation, how to calculate what it will take or what it will cost you to run an aerator or a fountain in your area, and so forth. So anyway, thanks for joining me. I hope you have a great day, and we'll see you again soon.